meeting, we will just continue right on with you, sir, with request number 2015-07, Mr. Thomas Schaefer. Yes, sir. This is also a resuming request for 0.75 acres to rezone from RM Conditional to CC, which stands for Community Commercial. Property is located at 400 Bay Tree Road. This is at the northwest corner of Bay Tree and Sunny Drive. Uh, we should look at the zoning map and see the cluster of RM zoning. As if you remember well from last year, uh, we had a fairly contentious zoning case for these eight parcels uh, to rezone from a combination of R10 and OP to the RM. Uh, there's many conditions that were placed on that uh, rezoning by City Council. Those are all listed in your packet as a copy of the land certificate. In this case, the subject property is just this corner lot. Um, it contains one of the uh, houses that were discussed last year. This is effectively known as the Nichols House. This is just to be a fraternity. Um, very large dwelling sitting on the corner. Um, many of the conditions that were placed on this rezoning last year really are not applicable to this property. Most of those conditions have to do with the property space in Pine Tree Road, which limit the size and the scale of the building. And so forth. Um, staff had, of course, have had discussions with the applicant. Uh, we had recommended rather than commercial zoning, which the property is eligible for, um, to look at perhaps RN without conditions. Uh, we would have been supportive of that, or even OP zoning, which is what this property was zoned before last year. However, the applicants have submitted their application for uh, CC zoning. On the character area map, this is also an neighborhood activity center seems to be a popular theme in our zoning cases this evening. Um, but since it faces Bay Tree Road, it is eligible for up to CC zone. And that is what the applicant is requesting. See, this is sort of at the intersection of three character areas, uh, neighborhood activity center, established residential, which is residential zones only, and then institutional activity center, which is that area characterized here by BSU properties. Um, in the aerial, see what is around you. You have the BSU main campus directly across the south, the PE complex, the uh, apartment complex to the east, uh, the Vika Academy to the north northeast, and then directly to the north and northwest is the Alden Park neighborhood, which is very much a solid single family neighborhood. Otherwise, what you're left with is the Bay Tree Road corridor. Um, the site plan, um, the applicants do not have a specific use in mind. They're looking at the market the property for uses that are allowed in CC zoning, which are fairly broad and varied, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, subject property itself, here is the Nichols House, two photos of that, some of the surroundings. And then this is the view down Bay Tree Road. Um, it is very much not a commercial corridor. Um, if you look at that zoning map in your packet, you will not find commercial zoning anywhere on that extent of that map. Um, you have to go several blocks down the road to the west down past the old um, college station apartments before you even begin to hit the commercial zone. Like we talked about at the work session, Bay Tree Road is sort of a transition from the university out to the mall, <coughs> and very low intensive pieces comparatively around the university. And as you go westward toward the mall, it seems to intensify. Our staff is supportive of maintaining that pattern, at least for now, and particularly with this type of view, without commercial uses or appearances in the area. We're not supportive of rezoning to something as intensive as CC. Um, there are three levels of commercial zoning in Valdosta, CN, CC, and CH, sort of low, medium, and high. The center category is CC it is very broad. It includes all forms of retail, sales, and services, whether it be restaurants, uh, nightclubs, uh, gas stations with convenience stores. It also allows professional offices. Also allows them to you can recall a, a couple of years ago, we amended the city's development regulations to allow multifamily in CC zoning um, at up to 60 bedrooms per acre. Um, at least a couple years ago, that included that. Um, so, fairly broad, a lot of different types of uses that are allowed there. Um, staff's view in terms of the total package of what CC allows is simply too intensive for this property and certainly at this time. So, with that, staff has found this inconsistent with the conference of plan standards for exercise of zoning power, and we are recommending to not. Thank you very much, Mayor. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Yes, thank you. Commissioner Glenn? Good. Um, applicants, what was their reaction to having to go back to OP, which is original zoning? I think yes. just from the early conversation with them, because the property is eligible for CC zoning, um, they think we should start arguing for 
heart. I understand the argument for the busy nature of age grade proximity to the university campus over walk. Um, there are some you know, things in favor of that. Um, but in staff's view, there's far more negative than there is. Um, I think they are wanting to see if they can get more projects out of it, and if not, they can consider something else. Something I have cautioned the applicants on that it defeats the Star City Council with the denial. Um, then this property is locked out of the zoning change for one year. So there's somewhat of a gamble that the people continue to score. Um, do they have um, an expected use of the property? All there is is the site plan in your packet. It is not used specific, at least not that they have shared with us. Um, the applicant in this case is a realtor, it is not the property owner. They have sent an authorized property owner to seek out this commercial zoning and they may be here this evening to answer some of those questions for you. Um, but this is all that they have presented us as a side plan to show how this property might be developed commercially. Um, it, remember, this is not a site plan approval that would not be locked into it, but it's simply a demonstration. That is about a 4,500 square foot commercial building. It has more than enough parking for retail with a building of that size, but a restaurant of that size, it does not have enough parking. But if they were to look at restaurant type usage, the building would have to be small. <coughs> uh, offices or retail certainly have to be enough. But in fact, the building could even be a little bit larger. Commissioners, any more questions for staff? I got one just out of curiosity. What, what happened with the last combination of all this together? That was one developer who had those properties under contract to develop it, and they were called a large site plan, um, very specific, lots of details to it, with the conditions as one apartment complex. Um, in fact, one of the conditions of zoning on this property is the work to develop is multifamily. We would have to stay together as one block. And that's really the only condition that bears on this board parcel. Um, but the developer, let it be known, soon after city council's approval, that they could not quite uh, adapt to the conditions that were imposed, and they abandoned the idea of constructing it. Um, the zoning is still there. Another developer can come along, pick it up, um, and build something the same or perhaps similar. Or seek for example, do something else, maybe RM without conditions or RM with other conditions. Lots of possibilities. Commissioners, any other questions for staff on this request? There being none, if there's someone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time and state your name and your address, please, sir. My name is Tom Shatter. My address is 
please come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this report? Good evening. Can I state your name and your address, please? Uh, my name is Colleen McDonough, 1631 Boone Drive. Uh, not necessarily in opposition to the idea of commercial development on this property, but more so for a number of things that have been brought up by Mr. Martin. One is the broadness of the category. It can allow, as he mentioned, up to dense multifamily, 60 rooms per acre. I we fought last year against this, so against multifamily in this area for a number of reasons, traffic, um, you know, uh, incompatible use with the surrounding areas, etc. So, you know, multifamily and commercial, community commercial, we have to oppose it. Um, but uh, there's other things that we have issues with. Um, and one is, I guess, the site plans. Again, we always come up to this. If, if this were a potential site plan, we have ingress and egress along Azalea Drive. That's right near a, a school that is two, over 200, 238 students, I believe, and, and potentially increasing. These students walk daily to the university, excuse me, the university. And so um, that's, that's a problem or a, a kind of problem we see. Um, Another has to do with the detention pond. I remember last year in this room, um, Commissioner Gladwin talked about this detention pond sitting right on that prominent corner. And so it would be advantageous if developers or the or on conditions that we can try to minimize that with permeable type of, of parking or another way to get rid of the detention pond so it's not so prominent. And even this, this site plan, it's not really conducive for pedestrians. Um, there's no kind of pedestrian walkway up to it. And I would have loved to see the um, applicant do a proposed plan that included the footprint of the building that's there. So we know from last year in the packets there was a letter from the State Historical Society that said it was eligible for historic status at the state level and potentially at the national level. And so it would have been really nice to see a really a, a site plan with that building there to show somebody what could be done, you know, with a coffee shop, with, you know, a, a low-use type of commercial development. Um, there's just all the other things, like we would, if, if this were to go in, we'd like some conditions on buffers, to buffer it from the rest of the neighborhood, um, some way to, to minimize the traffic on the the collective road and move it to Bay Tree Road. Um, obviously try to keep as many trees on this property as possible so that you don't have this scar right next to the university where and then you have you know other other um, um, other uses all around it with beautiful foliage. And the other thing that we keep thinking of is or it, it frustrates the neighborhood is that if this gets rezoned, this is the third zone zoning for this piece of property in a year. It would be really nice to like to sort of see what the I guess vision of this property is and this corridor is for the city because if it just keeps <coughs> flipping with with every developer's whim. It's just really frustrating for me. So um, I'll leave it at that and if you have any questions. Mr. Is any questions for present? I got one for where it usually open the I live two blocks right now. Two blocks. Thank you. We do have time for one more. Person that like to speak in opposition to this. We do not have any commissioners.
interest, any discussion amongst ourselves on this agenda item? <coughs> There being no discussion at this time, I will take a motion for this agenda item. Mr. Mr. Please raise your hand. The motion carries six to two, Mr. Carmel. 